You already made everybody think I'm crazy. You already took my family away. You already separated all my friends. I don't got no celebrity friends. Because you think I could book that for like the, the, the weekend of the 14th when the soundtrack comes out? Diddy's reign is crumbling after decades of alleged dark deeds and the shocking twist. He's not going down alone. The feds have made it clear Diddy wasn't acting solo and the investigation is just getting started. When asked about other potential names in the mix, prosecuting attorney Damian Williams hinted, the investigation is ongoing. That means both as to him and to anyone else who we believe committed the crime with him. The Southern District of New York doesn't mess around. They don't take cases lightly. If they're targeting Diddy, you can bet the evidence is stacked high. Now the real question looms, who else is caught in this web? Which stars should we be watching closely? And what really went down at those infamous freak-off parties that everyone's buzzing about? It's worse than anyone imagined, and it turns out Diddy and his crew have been dropping clues all along, hidden in plain sight. Get ready as we reveal all the gory details. Unmasking Diddy, the scandals, suspicious deaths, and secret parties. Today we're pulling back the curtain on Diddy's celebrity web and examining which stars could also be facing charges. The murky side of Diddy's infamous freak-off parties isn't just another Hollywood story. It's a twisted web of abuse, blackmail, and cover-ups. And while some parties looked like regular celeb gatherings anyone in L.A. could pay to attend, it's those after-hours events where things got dangerously dark. And yeah, I'm not going to name the names of people who are victims on those tapes. Now, if celebrities are out there doing a crime or partaking in crimes... Uh Brace yourselves. This story is disturbing and complex, but after years in the shadows, the truth is surfacing. To really understand which big names might be complicit, you need to know one thing. Diddy is far more dangerous than you'd think. For years, Diddy's public image has been that of a mentor and family man, a dad who helped launch Usher and Justin Bieber into stardom, who's always talking about his kids and keeping it lighthearted. I don't know what you're talking about. My daughter's only 15. She's not dating. Not now, not ever. But that image was PR crafted, meant to mask his violent past. In reality, Diddy was at the center of one of rap's deadliest feuds, even allegedly saying, I don't care if Pac dies, Big dies, or Shug goes to jail. Now, as his old rival Shug Knight comes forward with more information, Diddy's past is catching up to him not to mention the string of suspicious deaths tied to him, some so eerie we explored them in our first Diddy deep dive. Strange how everyone who's ever started a tell-all book about Diddy has wound up dead or seriously ill. Andre Harrell was writing a book before he passed. Heavy D was working on one too. Al B. Sure, who was working on a documentary fell into a coma. Even Kim Porter, Diddy's ex and the mother of his children, had started a tell-all before her mysterious death at 47. Kim allegedly met with Diddy's former mentor, Andre Harrell, about a tape involving him and Diddy just before she died. Officially, she passed from pneumonia, but as we covered, symptoms like pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, and heart failure can all be caused by poisoning. Jaguar Wright, Diddy's former assistant, claimed that toxins showed up in Kim's toxicology report. The first coroner's report ruled it a suicide, and they found toxins proving she was poisoned. They have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide, and they found toxins in her body. And fun fact, guess who was at the scene when Kim's body was found? Corey Gamble, Kris Jenner's boyfriend, who has deep ties to Diddy. This isn't even half of it. Back in April, we counted seven deaths and four attempted murders linked to Diddy. And even more have come to light. And if the poisoning theory sounds extreme, just know Diddy himself allegedly won't eat in jail, fearing he might be poisoned. As we dive into new evidence, victims, accomplices, and witnesses who've stayed silent, remember, people feared Diddy for more than their careers. They feared for their lives. We also have to keep in mind that not every Diddy party was a freak-off party, but once the lights dimmed, 
his after-hours gatherings took a disturbing turn. Just remember, ain't no party like a ditty party. At his 50th birthday bash alone, it was like a red carpet event for Hollywood's A-list. So, as we dig into these secrets and the A-list names who might be caught up in it, keep your eyes open. This story is darker than anyone realized, and we've only begun unraveling the threads. Inside Diddy's white parties, glamour, scandals, and dark secrets. Diddy's parties were legendary, but none more so than his annual white parties. Starting in 1998 with just 200 guests in the Hamptons, he described it as the craziest mix. Friends from Harlem mingling with Leonardo DiCaprio fresh off Titanic, socialites, and family from down south. Sounds innocent, right? But by the time his last white party rolled around in 2009, co-hosted by Ashton Kutcher, white party had become synonymous with Diddy. This is the real white party, he'd boast. These events were even family-friendly until a certain hour. Diddy once reminded guests, kids have an hour left before they have to go. After that, this thing turns into something you'll want to see when you're older. So after the kids left, that's when things turned dark, right? Actually, many partygoers didn't even know what was happening. Comedian Brandon T. Jackson recalls Diddy often made brief appearances, sometimes even following Denzel Washington's advice to leave 30 minutes before the devil arrives. Denzel and Brandon weren't the only ones who left early. Marlon Wayans once tweeted, Been doing Diddy parties for 15 years and I must say you never let me down, Puff, yet claims he never witnessed the so-called freak-offs. I was there till 3.30, he jokes. So this stuff started at 3.32? I've been to plenty of Diddy parties. I left early. I swear to you, I've never seen the stuff that they, they claim to it. be going on. I've never seen it. We wear dresses. Ain't a gay bone in my body. The gayest thing about me is my daughter. It's possible that if Diddy felt someone might expose his secret gatherings, he waited until they left. As we now know, Diddy was selective about who joined his dark circle. Tony Willer, known in certain circles, claims he was specifically recruited for these freak-offs without fully understanding what they entailed. Diddy doesn't reach out to you himself. He has his people do it so it stays confidential, he explained. And while not everyone who attended Diddy's parties was involved in the darker events, the freak-offs were as infamous as Atlanta's Freaknik Festival. Then, the real truth started surfacing after Diddy's home raid in March 2024. Federal agents seized items that confirmed disturbing details of these after-hours freak-offs. A law enforcement source told CNN the raid was connected to an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Including electronics with footage showing multiple victims, firearms, and evidence of drug use and manipulation. Among the items found were cases of personal lubricant and baby oil, and over 1,000 bottles stocked up for these events. His lawyers tried to pass this off as a bulk Costco buy, but Costco quickly clapped back, saying they don't even stock baby oil. They also found an unbelievable 784 dildos at his L.A. mansion, displayed in shocking images of agents standing beside the stash. One DHS agent went so far as to call Diddy as bad as Epstein, citing sex-dedicated rooms in his Florida mansion, rigged with hidden cameras covering every angle. That's frightening enough, but combined with stories of Diddy allegedly spiking drinks, the full picture starts to emerge. In one lawsuit, Adria Cherie English claims bottles of liquor were intentionally laced with drugs to lower inhibitions. This went beyond just the female workers. A former party caterer claims he steered clear of the champagne flutes, suspecting they were spiked. Nikki Heaton, who was only 19 at the time, says Diddy allegedly tried to drug her and her manager at a party with Kanye West. She recalls feeling uncomfortable as Diddy and Kanye exchanged glances watching her and her manager closely. I pretended to drink, but something was definitely in it. I watched my manager take two sips, and suddenly she was loud, making jokes, totally unlike herself. She was usually reserved. I just knew those drinks were laced. Behind the glamour, the dark reality of Diddy's freak-off parties. As more details emerge, Diddy's infamous parties reveal a twisted side that goes beyond Hollywood glamour. 
His exclusive freak-offs were a world all their own, with boundaries pushed further than many would ever expect. According to the latest allegations, these events, filled with secrecy, manipulation, and coercion, paint a grim picture that's sending shockwaves through Hollywood. So, what exactly went down behind those locked doors? The indictment sheds light on a well-planned disturbing operation. Diddy is accused of organizing multi-day freak-offs, using force and threats to compel unwilling guests into performances with commercial sex workers, some allegedly transported across state lines for the occasion. These gatherings often included a mix of heavy drugs, ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB that Diddy allegedly supplied to keep participants compliant. His team reportedly prepped each room, from lighting to endless supplies of baby oil, creating scenes that felt more like movie sets than parties. And it didn't end there. Even with guest consent allegedly taken by force, Diddy had every moment recorded from all angles. One DHS agent called Diddy's operation on par with Epstein, with secret cameras throughout his Florida and LA homes enough evidence to reveal unimaginable details of his gatherings. The tapes are said to expose chilling aspects of the parties, including tampered drinks and guests unknowingly filmed. When Diddy's private estate was raided in 2024, authorities discovered everything from cases of baby oil to concealed firearms and 784 adult items, turning his home into an evidence vault of Hollywood's hidden nightmare. For some guests, these tapes have resurfaced as blackmail tools. Attorney Ariel Mitchell confirmed leaked tapes are circulating in Hollywood, some even featuring high-profile guests who never suspected they were being recorded. Yes, tapes are out there, Mitchell said. One contact offered to sell a tape to one celebrity before it went public, confirming a catch-and-kill scheme in play. It's no question if it's them she added, hinting that the visible guests are more high-profile than Diddy himself. And how did he recruit people for these twisted freak-offs? Blackmail has been Diddy's silent weapon for years. Former Danity Kane singer Aubrey O'Day hinted at the culture of coercion in an interview, saying, It wasn't about talent. You signed a million NDAs. A journalist revealed that when Diddy offered their family member an internship, he ended it abruptly after the young woman refused to spend the night with him. For those who resisted or tried to speak out, like artist Jaguar Wright, Diddy used labels like crazy to undermine them or held compromising footage as leverage. Some fans have speculated the charges are exaggerated. Maybe it's because he's a successful black man, they argue. But one lawsuit hints at just how far Diddy was willing to go. Disgraced rapper Sean Combs facing two new sex abuse lawsuits as he sits in a jail in New York City, held without bail. In a bizarre twist, cartel member Alfredo P. Gonzalez once sued Diddy for loss of profits, claiming that Diddy's associates contacted him to recruit young performers for an event. When Alfredo refused, explaining that his cartel doesn't traffic minors. A man named Alfredo P. Gonzalez has filed a defamation action against Combs and Bad Boy Entertainment. Diddy's people reportedly kept pushing, suggesting he could come watch the entertainment. When you see Diddy willing to confront a cartel, it's unsettling to imagine what his controlled guests endured. Even federal prosecutors are holding back specifics about just how many people suffered under his influence. The Unraveling Web Diddy's dark legacy of abuse and accomplices. As the dust settles on the allegations against Diddy, one thing is becoming painfully clear. Countless individuals have suffered under his control, and the feds are just scratching the surface of this dark narrative. While there are already 11 lawsuits in play, that number is expanding far beyond what anyone could have predicted. When lawyers Tony Busby and Andrew Van Arsdale sent out a call for victims after Diddy's arrest, they were inundated with over 3,000 responses in a mere 10 days. Even after filtering for those with credible evidence, they still amassed more than 120 lawsuits across Miami, Los Angeles, and New York. Shockingly, the ages of these survivors at the time of the abuse ranged from just 9 years old to 38. 
One heartbreaking case involves a nine-year-old taken to an audition at Bad Boy Records in New York City, where it's alleged that Sean Combs and others harmed the child under the pretense of securing a record deal for him. This abuse sheds light on a system of exploitation that's been allowed to flourish for far too long. Survivors are increasingly crediting their bravery to one of the first to step forward, Cassie. She began her relationship with Diddy as a teenager, signing with Bad Boy Records and enduring a tumultuous on-and-off romance for over a decade. In 2018, Cassie shocked the industry by filing a lawsuit against him, detailing horrific allegations of abuse, forced encounters with his associates, and drugging to maintain control. Footage has since surfaced, showing Diddy chasing Cassie from a hotel room in a towel. Since CNN uncovered this disturbing video. Physically assaulting her and dragging her back inside by her hair. Shocking evidence that supports her claims, along with those of other victims. According to the indictment, Diddy's control extended beyond physical violence. He allegedly employed others to help monitor victims and prevent them from escaping to hide their injuries. His ex-wife, Kim Porter, serves as a disturbing example of this obsession. Former employees have claimed Diddy tapped Kim's phone for years, a clear indication of his need to control her every move. A troubling incident from 2005 involved Diddy allegedly injuring Kim while boating and then flying in a plastic surgeon to cover up the damage. This mirrors Cassie's claims that Diddy would hide her away in hotels for days, allowing her bruises to heal after his assaults. Even more unsettling, the indictment states that Diddy's associates would track down victims who attempted to escape his grip, acting like a crime boss sending out henchmen. The number of cases continues to climb, and it's clear that we could fill another entire video dissecting the chilling stories of these victims. For instance, Joy Dickerson Neal alleges Diddy recorded her without consent while she was in college. Lisa Gardner, who was just 16, claims she was harmed by both Diddy and R&B singer Aaron Hall, and the day after the assault, Diddy allegedly threatened her at her home. Then there's Aurelia Graves, who accused Diddy and his bodyguard of drugging, binding, and brutalizing her while recording the ordeal. Let's not forget the infamous Lil Rod lawsuit we discussed in our previous video which encompasses a range of serious allegations from sexual assault to Diddy supposedly covering up acts involving his son Justin and a friend. It's hard to grasp the terror these victims faced, knowing Diddy's notorious past while grappling with his abusive behavior in real time. It's no wonder they felt trapped, especially with Diddy's accomplices lurking in the shadows. And as we dive deeper, questions arise. Who are these accomplices? And how high does this network extend? Some names have already emerged, with connections that are alarming and far-reaching. Lil Rod was among the first to name names when he filed his lawsuit in February 2024. Doing this situation is not easy. Taking Puff to court, suing him is not easy. I don't have the, the, the monies. Just ahead of the raid on Diddy's home. While some names like Prince Harry are merely mentioned as examples of the kind of influential individuals Diddy's circle might attract, others carry more troubling implications. Cuba Gooding Jr., for example, has been accused of inappropriate behavior with Lil Rod, reportedly under Diddy's influence. Young Miami appears in two capacities. First, as one of the party participants employed by Diddy alongside Daphne Joyce, Stevie J, and Jade. And second, her cousin allegedly harmed Lil Rod in 2022. Then there are the CEOs making headlines, like Ethiopia Habtamarium of Motown Records and Charles Grange of Universal Music Group, both named for profiting off Lil Rod's exploitation. And they aren't the only high-level executives in hot water. Numerous notable resignations have occurred in the days following Diddy's arrest, hinting at a wider conspiracy. As this story unfolds, the layers of deceit and abuse seem endless, and we're left wondering just how far Diddy's influence truly stretches. Stay tuned as we continue to uncover this shocking saga. Diddy's Downfall The Scandal Unfolds On September 16th, Diddy was arrested, sending shockwaves through the music industry. Just a day later, 
Kevin Lyles, the CEO of Warner Music's Elektra 300 Entertainment, resigned after two decades at the company. The day after that, Kaz Kobayashi, the CEO of Warner Music Japan, stepped down with no successor in sight. And on September 19th, Randy Goodman, CEO of Sony Music Nashville, announced his retirement. The timeline raises eyebrows. It's hard to believe these departures are mere coincidences. It's especially puzzling why Randy would choose such a tumultuous week for his exit. Twitter users quickly began to highlight the suspicious timing of the first two resignations. Diddy's extensive network of celebrity friendships only adds layers to this already complicated story. While it's impossible to cover every relationship, a few names stand out that merit a closer look. Take Steve Harvey, for instance. His friendship with Diddy dives deep into a rabbit hole of scandal, including Diddy's past romance with Steve's daughter Lori and double dates with Steve and his wife in Europe. Rumors even suggest that Steve might have fled the country, though fact-checkers have deemed these claims false. Usher's connection to Diddy is particularly troubling, as he may have been victimized himself after being recruited by Diddy at a young age. Jaguar Wright, a former assistant of Diddy, backs this up, stating that Usher was rushed to the hospital, a fact not widely known until insiders revealed it. Then there's Kim Porter who was reportedly working on a tell-all book when she tragically died. Allegations have emerged claiming the book would have contained explosive details about Diddy, including shocking claims involving Mary J. Blige and accusations that Diddy gave Usher an STD. This last claim gained traction, especially after both Diddy and Usher faced lawsuits regarding herpes. Recent revelations about Usher suggest a troubling cycle of abuse. Jaguar asserts that Diddy had been trying to get to Justin Bieber for some time, and when Usher took over his management, he allegedly granted temporary guardianship to a dealer for 48 hours. This raises serious questions about Usher's intentions. The implications of these revelations about Justin are heartbreaking. With so many allegations of exploitation swirling around, it changes how we view past interactions. A now infamous clip featuring Justin discussing their past hangs heavier in light of this context. One can't help but wonder what really went on behind closed doors, especially considering that Justin was only 16 at the time. The situation gets even murkier when bringing Jennifer Lopez into the mix. Back in 1999, she was with Diddy when he was involved in a shooting incident with Shine. While many suspect Diddy might have pulled the trigger, Lil Rod's lawsuit claims Diddy pinned the blame on J-Lo, alleging that she carried the gun that night. Jaguar also corroborates this, asserting that J-Lo had gunshot residue on her hands. Then there's Shug Knight speculating that J-Lo's appearance on tapes confiscated in the Diddy raid might explain her recent divorce from Ben Affleck. Shug insinuates that the FBI likely showed Ben compromising footage of J-Lo, leading to irreparable damage in their marriage. Rumors are swirling that 50 Cent leaked explicit tapes of J-Lo and Justin Bieber to the FBI, although concrete evidence is lacking. Regardless, it raises the question, is J-Lo's split from Ben merely a distraction to divide their assets and protect Ben from the unfolding scandal? Only time will reveal the truth. Diddy's history of abuse casts a dark shadow over various scenes from his past. Other potential accomplices have emerged including Leonardo DiCaprio, who attended Diddy's inaugural white party in 1998. However, Leo's team insists he hasn't had contact with Diddy in years. Pink's recent absence from social media raises eyebrows as well. Her Twitter account vanished around the same time as Usher's, and while Usher claimed hackers were responsible, Pink has been largely inactive on Twitter with no known connections to Diddy. Megan Fox's ties to Diddy also invite scrutiny. While her Twitter activity has been sparse, she has deleted multiple Instagram posts recently, leading many to speculate about her involvement in Diddy's alleged exploits. Given the hypersexualization of women in Hollywood, there's a growing concern that she may be more of a victim than a perpetrator. Several high-profile figures have unfollowed Diddy, including Steph Curry, LeBron James, and Meek Mill. While not much is known about Steph's involvement beyond a friendly tweet from 2017, 
LeBron's past party connections with Diddy keep him under suspicion. Meek Mill's connection is particularly concerning. Not only has he worked with Diddy, but clips have surfaced of Diddy calling him Daddy. You doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Which raises eyebrows. Additionally, Meek's lyrics suggest a troubling history with Diddy, implying he may have engaged in illicit activities with underage girls on Diddy's yacht. This perspective casts Meek's defensive social media posts in a new light. Then there's the enigmatic relationship between Diddy, Jay-Z, and Beyonce, as well as the Kardashian clan, which includes Kanye, Corey Gamble, Travis Scott, and Tyga. With so many connections, it warrants a dedicated investigation of its own. Finally, Ashton Kutcher's connection to Diddy is a rabbit hole worth exploring. Ashton co-hosted the final white party with Diddy in 2009, and they were close friends. However, footage has surfaced of them conversing with underage girls on a platform known for hosting such interactions. Recent reports suggest that an insider from Ashton's team claims he deeply regrets his friendship with Diddy, feeling betrayed and manipulated. However, Given Ashton's past associations with convicted rapist Danny Masterson, ties to Scientology, and a history of questionable behavior, skepticism remains high about his claims of betrayal. Meanwhile, Ashton's team is reportedly on high alert, fearing Diddy could turn against anyone to secure a lighter sentence. As the list of potential accomplices continues to grow, there's speculation that the feds might offer immunity to certain individuals involved in the RICO case to testify against Diddy. If these individuals were introduced to this lifestyle at a young age, becoming successful entertainers later, they may view cooperation as a way to escape their pasts. This narrative is dense and complex, barely scratching the surface of the issues at hand. As unsettling as these topics are, they are crucial for accountability. As the scandal unfolds, those interested are encouraged to engage and explore further. For where there's a scandal, there's often more than meets the eye. Do you think that the mentioned celebrities are guilty accomplices or simply victims? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Smash the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Be sure to turn on the notification bell to be notified of new uploads. Cheers!